technically Atlantic hurricane season ends this coming Monday and the 2020 season is now the busiest on record. I'm going to go through some of the numbers and look at how we got here in this week's Heather's Weather Wise. The Atlantic hurricane season spans a pretty big part of the year from June 1st all the way to November 30th, but storms can certainly form outside of those bands and they often do. The most active part of the season is usually right around mid September into early October. Normally in a season you would get 11 named storms with six of them becoming hurricanes, but here's how this season broke down. As of late last week, we've had 31 named storms and 13 hurricanes. That sets the record for most named storms in a season. 12 of them made landfall in the US. That's another record. What might be most impressive though is how strong the October and November storms have been. 2020 now makes five hurricane seasons in a row with more storms than normal. But how was this year so much more active? In order to get the answer, let's start off by looking at two environmental musts for hurricane development. There's two, really. Very warm ocean surface temperatures and light winds in the mid and upper atmosphere. The bathtub-like water is what feeds the thunderstorms that strengthen into organized tropical systems. Light winds are what allow the storms to stay intact. If winds a few thousand feet up are too strong, it's like the storm gets caught in a shredder, it just falls apart. Let's start with the winds. They've been unusually calm this year in the Western Atlantic, and one of the reasons why is something I've already talked about here in Heather's Weather Wise, it's La Nina, and it's technically defined as an area of cooler than normal water at the surface of the East Pacific Ocean. But that cool ocean water correlates in the long term to a weakening of the trade winds all around the Northern Hemisphere. The trade winds blow from the east at the surface, but from the west at higher elevations. Now, as these winds weaken, there's less of a difference between them and less of what we call wind shear. Less shear means that these storms are able to develop and hang on longer. The East Pacific has been chilly, but the Central and Western Atlantic has been just the opposite. Weather patterns aren't necessarily to blame because oceans heat and cool very slowly, so we have to think long term. There is likely a climate connection. Earth's global mean temperature has been rising on average 0.18 degrees Fahrenheit every decade since the 1850s. And of all of the warming happening on planet Earth, 90% of that heat is going into the oceans. Now, an oceanographer could give you a far more detailed answer, but clearly climate change has a hat in the ring here with hurricane season. So a combo of climate factors and large scale weather patterns set the stage for this unprecedented hurricane season in the Atlantic. For what it's worth, the Atlantic's second most active hurricane season back in 2005 produced less than normal snowfall here in Buffalo, and that was also a La Nina season. Do with that what you will. That's it for this week's Heather's Weather Wise. I'll see you next week with a new topic, but until then, remember it's good to be a geek.